Hey everyone, welcome to this, your next installment of the Golden Gate Tech Talk series. This is your source for informative and timely tech topics about Golden Gate software, data replication, and cloud data integration. The industry leading data replication software for more than 20 years, Golden Gate is still innovating today and helping thousands of leading brands get the most business value out of their data. As a multi-cloud capable replication engine, Golden Gate helps customers maintain seamless integration across their public clouds. But what makes Golden Gate really special is the breadth and attention to enterprise class solutions for databases, cloud, big data, NoSQL, and streaming technologies of all kinds, not just Oracle. Golden Gate's rock solid foundation is the best in class for data high availability, high speed transaction replication, and data warehouse loading. But modern data challenges require the most innovative solutions, and Golden Gate delivers on world-class data lake ingestion, stream data processing for real-time ETL, and advanced stream analytics that include geofencing, time series processing, and machine learning integrations. As a platform for modern data integration, Golden Gate just can't be beat. Well, that's about it for the intro. Let's get on with today's tech topic. Hello, everyone. My name is Warner, and I am the product manager for Oracle Golden Gate. Today I'm going to show you two examples of how to connect the Golden Gate Classic architecture to Golden Gate Microservice architecture. Um, as we all know, uh, the Golden Gate Marketplace is using uh, two different architectures. One is Classic architecture, another is the Microservice architecture. If you already have Classic architecture running, you want to send the data to Microservice architecture, uh, you will need to use the pop extract in the classic extractor to communicate with the microservice architecture. Um, and uh, we all know in the classic architecture, there is no SSL uh, protocol. So that's why if you want to set up this kind of communication, you have to make sure your microservice architecture, which is your target, uh, is done through a unsecured deployment. Otherwise, if you do this through the secure deployment, then the receiver server will require the SSL certificate to connect, uh, which will not work. And to make sure this unsecured deployment is uh, still protected, uh, you can actually have a Nginx running, which is the reverse proxy server, and uh, that Nginx server can still use the SSL. And this is actually the architecture of the marketplace Golden Gate deployment. So the Nginx is using SSL, but the underneath deployment are unsecured. So with the unsecured deployment, that enables the pump extract to communicate directly with receiver server if you open the receiver port, allow the pump extract to connect. And uh, when the pump extra to connect, you just need to use the port parameter instead of MGR port. So this way the receiver server will understand the old Golden Gate protocol to re, uh, receive all the trail files. Because there's no uh, SSL uh, encryption between these two endpoints, that's why we highly recommend you to encrypt the Golden Gate trail files uh, before the pump extract sent it out. Also, if this is a on-premise to cloud communication, we will also recommend the fast connect or VPN connection to further secure the communication. Uh, so this is the uh, first way, which is a simple way you can do to connect the pump extract directly to the receiver server. Um, if you feel this direct connection is not secure enough, we also provide you the SOX5 proxy tunnel connection format, which will allow the pump extract to utilize the SOX5 proxy to communicate to the receiver server. So in this implementation, your uh, Microsoft architecture does not need to open the receiver server port. Instead, it just need to open the port SSH uh, to the outside. And then once the uh, SOX5 proxy tunnel is created, on the port 22, then in your pump extract, you can specify the SOX proxy parameter to allow the pump extract use the tunnel to communicate with the microservice architecture. Okay, 
So those are the two different methods we can use uh, to connect from the classic architecture to microservice architecture. And now I'm going to show you the demo how we are going to create those. So the first uh, example will be the pump extract talk directly to the receiver server. So now let's take a look at our microservice architectures uh, configuration here. And uh, we already have the uh, microservice architecture running. And if, say, we pick up this receiver server, uh, here is the port you need to uh, communicate. So to make sure the, uh, the communication is successful, you need to do two things. The first thing you need to make sure is this port is opened correctly on your network security uh, rules. And uh, give me a second, let me log in again. Okay. So once you log in, here I have a security group to put the 9013 as the ingress port. You can limit the source, right? So which source can reach this port? This is very important. Uh, so this is on the uh, network security list side. You have to make sure uh, this uh, particular uh, microservice architectures VM can receive ingress traffic to the port 9013. On top of that, you also need to make sure um, your firewall setting, there is actually internal firewall running on this particular machine. So we have to use firewall command to check. And you have to see the 9013 is here. By default, it's not. You need to enable that. Uh, to enable any port on a uh, firewall, uh, the command is like this. For example, I just pick like 888. Okay, this is just a pure exam example. If you do that, if you do the firewall command the supports, you can see the 8888 is already added here, right? And then if you want to remove that, you just do the remove port command. And then you will get it removed. Okay, and the same thing, if you don't see 9013, which is the receiver port open, please use the add port command to make it open. And then you will be able to communicate from the source side, which is here. This is the source system we currently have, which is running a Golden Gate Classic architecture. And to verify that, we can actually do a NC command. Okay, so the NC command will test to connect to this particular host and the port number, and you'll see it's successful. Okay, so that means the two systems can communicate with each other. So now with the port established, we can configure the pump extract. And uh, before we do that, I just want to show you what trail file we currently have. Okay, we currently have some testing trail file here. So I want to send the trail file B8 to the microservice architecture site. So I, now I need to add the extract, which is the pump extract. And then I have add remote trail.
And keep in mind, if you are using the Microsoft architecture, the default trail location is always under slash u02 slash trails. Okay. And then I already did the parameter file ahead of time. So just show you what it looks like. So extract name, pass through, remote host. That is my target uh, going into microservice architecture, uh, host name, and a port number, which is receiver port. And ignore this line. This will be the second test setting where I'm going to use the SOX proxy, but not now. And this is the remote trail uh, name and need to match exactly what the remote trail we just added just now. And then it's a table name. So with all these parameters ready, and then one more thing I need to do is, because it's a testing system, I don't have a B80000 trail in here. So I need to alter the uh, pump to start from sequence one. Okay. And now it's going to start from the B8001. And now we can try to start it up. And then we can do a view report, see what it says. So we have the extract started, reading all the parameter files, and it found the trail file, and it starts sending data to the target. Okay, so it's up running and sending data. And how do we know it's landed on a target? Here, we do a LSL, we can see the trail files get created here, okay? And also, if you go to the receiver server, you see it successfully shows the trail file up the path with from the source to our target is up and running. So that's how we can configure the classic extract to send the data to the microservice architecture directly to receiver server. So finish our first uh, implementation. And now let me try to show you how we can use the second one use the SOX proxy tunnel. So let's stop this extract. Okay, and delete it. Okay, and then let's go there to purge the trail manually from the target location. So now it's clean. And then what we need to do is we need to first start a uh, the uh, SOX proxy uh, server, okay? So let me do this. I already prepared a file to start this so I don't have to type, okay? So this is the command I'm going to use Basically, it's going to use the SSH to create a, a SOX proxy tunnel. And uh, the SOX proxy is going to listen to the loopback, I'm sorry, the, the loopback address and the uh, port is 3109, which is the local port here, and then send everything to this machine, okay? So if I run this file, Okay, now grab the SSH. You will see there's SSH is running here, right? And then once this connection created, actually on the source, because I'm not using that port anymore, I can actually disable that port, just re remove the port uh, 9013, because I don't need to open that anymore. Now, if I list what port I currently have, I only have 443, right? And then I need to go to my parameter file. I 
going to replace this with the proxy server setting. Okay. So basically what it does is it tells it I have a proxy SOX proxy running at this local host 3109. Use that to talk to the host and a port number. And then I will follow the same procedure to add the extract. Do the same thing, the remote show at the same location. Call it, I can call it PT this time. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have to add the extract name in here. So the remote show added and I do the same trick. I have to alter the P test to start from the uh, sequence number one. Okay. All right, so everything's ready and let's check. There's nothing in the trails in here. And then if I start P test, report. I have some error here. I probably made a typo somewhere in the remote trail. It's not associated, so let's check. Oh, I use a PT, but in the parameter file, I believe the parameter file is said RT, so I need to change the parameter file as well. Start again. And it's up running. And you will see here the PT files are created. And if you also go to the website, refresh it. And you will see this connection is created from the, this one is actually from itself, right? Because it's using the um, SOX5 proxy. So basically it views it also almost like a local connection and writing the PT file. So that concluded today's presentation to show you this two method, uh, how to use direct connection from the pump extract to the receiver server, or you can use the SOX proxy tunnel to do the connection. Again, both will require you to have unsecured deployment on the target uh, Golden Gate microservice architecture. Again, my name is Warner, and uh, thanks a lot uh, for your time today, and hopefully uh, this information is helpful. Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in to this edition of the Golden Gate Tech Talk series. Be sure to check out all the other cool tech talks that are out there and stay tuned for more as they become available.